The reason that this coupling to the lattice is suspected to play an important role in this system is because if you look at lanthanum manganate, it's a 4D electron system. There are 4D electrons, which is a young tenor system. So in fact, the octahedra around the manganese is strongly distorted because of young tenor distortion. It has been believed that when you blow holes into the system, like strontium with this lanthanum, this antenna distortion, static antenna distortion, disappears. So people have talked about dynamic antenna distortion because from there you can easily get a coupling between the electronic states and the lattice vibrations. In fact, you can see that in the insulating state, when you have lanthanum strontium magnetic, if it is insulating state, then these doped holes are localized at some side. Those sides will be manganese four plus light. Lanthanum LA minus to manganese trivalent. In the insulating state, the, wherever the holes are, it will be manganese 4 plus like. Where the holes are not there, it will look like manganese 3 plus. Manganese 3 plus is once again young teller system. So even here, you would expect young teller, static young teller distortion in this system. Okay. But remember, as soon as these holes get delocalized, this antenna distortion, which is static, should vanish. And we wanted to investigate if indeed there are distortions and what kind of distortions these are. And we carried out some experiments, uh, extended absorption fine structure, <coughs> XRAFS experiment, which probes the local manganese oxygen distances. And then in extracting the radial distribution function from these XRAFS oscillations, you have a Debye-Waller factor. And the Debye-Waller factor gives you an idea of what is the randomness or the disorder. So average square disorder parameter you can extract from XRAFS analysis. And that's what I'm showing you now. This is a paper we're just in the process of submitting. These are two reference samples. Manganese oxide, which is a D5 manganese 2 plus ion. Regular octahedron, no ion channel distortion, static no yantilla distortion, and all that you find that the, the sigma squared, which is the root means, no, mean squared disorder parameter, shows a monotonic decrease with temperature, and this decrease fits very well. This dashed curve is a fit through the data point, assuming a <coughs> correlated Debye model, which is the applicable model in this case. And you find that this disorder is essentially electron phonon interactions. The phonons showing up in this way. Okay. Now, LA minus 3, which has strong static yantel distortion, shows that it's not very temperature dependent because it's dominated by the static yantel distortion, which does not depend on the temperature. Again, once again, you can fit it as a sum of a static angular distortion plus a correlated Debye model. And you can extract Debye temperature from there as well as here. And they make reasonable balances, 400 Kelvin. This turns out to be about 700 Kelvin. So these two behave the way they should behave. Now we're going to look at the doped system. But before I look at the doped system, I want to show you the resistivity plots. Because it is. You can play many games with these compounds. The compound, yeah, as I said, that this we are preparing the data, so some of them don't look very uh, nice. Some of the transparencies, bear with me. This is actually lanthanum 0.8 calcium <coughs> 0.2 compound, and the resistivity plot here. You can see that the resistivity peaks again insulating. There is room temperature, and as you lower the temperature, it goes through a transition and becomes metallic the transition temperature is there. Now, for the same compound, if you take out the same compound and heat it longer so that the grain size changes, then you can transform this transistivity plot into this resistivity plot. Notice that the composition remains the same, but the resistivity changes by nearly 50 or 60 Kelvin. The same compound with different heat treatment, you can shift the resistivity maximum by 50 or 60 Kelvin. Also here, the transition is very broad. Here it is sharper. That is for calcium 0.2. Here, similar, it says for calcium 0.4. A broad transition, 